Hey everyone, Sign here. Welcome to my channel. Today we're talking about uh, toxicity. Wow, that's uh, a big word, right? Um, so where do we start? Have you ever heard someone say, it's just the way I am. I'm not perfect. I'm human. Especially sometimes when we're Christians, we kind of like use the fact that we're imperfect and we're human as an excuse to not change. So we can be human and be repeat offenders, keep offending others and take that excuse as, oh, I'm imperfect. Oh, that's just the way I am. I'm imperfect. But as Christians, what are we called to? What does the Bible say that we should do? Yes, we are human. Nobody is perfect. And Probably we, probably the person who's judging the other person is worse than the person they're judging. This is just the way it works. Nobody is perfect. But why are we Christians if we are to stay imperfect? Jesus will come get a blameless wife, right? Jesus will come back to get us Christians. But in the meantime, while we're walking the walk of Christianity, we're aiming for being better people, being perfect. We're, we're, we're aiming towards being perfect. So the Bible says in Romans 12 too, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. So I'll read it again. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of the mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable. So Christians should not take it as, as an excuse of Okay, I'm not perfect, so I can do what the world does. I can copy the world. No, we're called to copy Jesus Christ, look like Jesus Christ. And technically, if we're aiming to look like Jesus Christ, the world should not love us. We shouldn't be loved by the world. The world shouldn't come to us because we look like them. There's something that is not right when we're conforming to the world so that we can win them to Christ because... It's two opposite things. It's not the same. So why then are we Christians if we have to conform to the world? Because the world, there's nothing of the world that is of God. The Bible says that we're in the world, but we're not of the world, right? So it's very important to not conform to the world. And if we're not to conform to what we are, we're to aim to be like Christ, which he is perfect. He is blameless. So every day we have to work towards that. Because if we just take that excuse as being imperfect, we dwell into sin. We dwell into imperfection. And we allow toxicity to creep in. Well, as Christians, we have to have a zero tolerance for being toxic and creating a toxic atmosphere like a lot of things that we do become toxic because we just accept that imperfect part of ourselves because we're imperfect we keep being imperfect we keep being toxic we keep being repeat offenders we're just not thriving we're just not aiming to become better people and that is not what the bible once Philippians 4 8 finally brothers and sisters whatever is true whatever is honorable whatever is just whatever is pure whatever is lovely whatever is commendable if there is any excellence if there is anything worth of praise think about those things so Christianity should be characterized by pursuing virtues pursuing a good heart, pursuing a pure heart, pursuing transparency, pursuing all these good things, excellence, things that are praiseworthy. This is what we're supposed to be pursuing, aiming for, not repeating every single time that we're imperfect and that 
that's just who we are and we're not changing. What's the point of being a Christian if you're not to pursue um, the virtues, the things that are praiseworthy, the, 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 the good heart, the pure heart? What is the point of being a Christian then? We have to, and there needs to be clear indications that we're changing. Every single time I meet you, my brother, my sister, I should be able to, to, to see a difference in your life. I should be able to note that you're changing. Your behavior is getting better. You're, 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 you're being better. You should be able to note that I am getting better, that I am making you better, that we're making each other better. That's the point. Because if we're falling under the anointing of the Holy Spirit and we're having powerful services and we are having powerful encounters with Christ and the Holy Spirit, but we're still the same, the same imperfect human that we were five years ago, 10 years ago, then there is a problem. And that means that we, we did not encounter the Holy Spirit. One encounter with the Holy Spirit changes your life. Moses went to on the mountaintop and he met the Holy Spirit. He met God, he spoke with God, and he came back transformed. So transformed means that you need, people need to see a difference in your behavior. People need to see that, oh, she was mean person before, and now she's actually softer. If not, then what is the point? So as Christian, my call is that Let's not dwell, sit in sin. Let's not dwell, sit in imperfection, but let's aim for virtues. Let's aim for, for the fruit of the Spirit. That if you encounter Christ, if you encounter the Holy Spirit, your transformation is tangible. Your transformation is visible. People can feel, sense it, and know it. And it's not just for one, two weeks, three weeks, and then you go back to your old self. It has to be a permanent transformation. And then keep fixing yourself every day, every time, until you become the person that Christ wants you to be, that looks like Christ. Aiming for that. That's all I wanted to share. I hope somebody's blessed. And I'll see you next time. Until then, take care.